So, uh, hello, hello. Um, welcome to yet another podcast with Dave and Curtis. Hello, Curtis. Hi, David. Uh, I have brought my face today. So from now on, I will not hide anymore. Um, <laughs> so hope to add a little bit more transparency. Um, so yeah, we've brought, we've prepared, um, uh, again, very interesting topics for you because um, the last two weeks were pretty action packed. Uh, I'm going to talk about the merch. I'm going to talk about the altcoins in general. I have updated my altcoin chart for you. And Curtis is going to talk about uh, the inflation. Most of all about the inflation, I believe. That's yeah. the big topic right now. So, uh, but we begin with the updates usually. So uh, Curtis, would you like to start with the, upda- with the update of Bitcoin? Yeah, it hasn't really moved that much considering you had the ETH merge and all of that, right? So. Uh, we're still grinding along between I don't know what, seventeen thousand and twenty four thousand range, mostly between what nineteen and twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Um, it could be that we. What happens is um, the bear market just gets really boring, and uh, it's already uh, it is. I think. <laughs> yeah, um, and that might be how it, it resolves itself. In other words, we just grind along. Uh, some people get bored and tired of waiting, and then you do have a, a lower price perhaps before the recovery, or we just hold these levels for another few months. Um, but it seems like we still have a ways to go. Mm-hmm. Um, what we're about 12 months in to the since the high. It was November. Of, uh-huh. uh, was it November 2021? I know it's a little bit earlier than that, wasn't it? It was 10th of November. Okay, so we're about 10 months since then. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the April, you know, the April high was, it was like a double top. So from the first top in April uh, was what, 61 or something, 60,000. Oh, okay, the last year, um, yeah. yeah, 14th of yeah, April, so 64. Kind of a double top, right? And if you counted from that first one, then we're over a year already. We're almost a year and a bit, so year and a half. So, um, it's been a while since people were excited, but I think <laughs> um, uh, it's going to grind for a bit longer. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you to the most of what you just said. Um, I think that it has the price action has been pretty boring and I couldn't have been happier with it. Um, there have been lots of shorting. Unfortunately, the short leverage, because we had a little bit uh, 20, 22.3k a few days ago and unfortunately that closed lots of the short leverage so i really hope fingers crossed that the short leverage is going to be reopened because mm-hmm. that's indeed the most bullish when you see the short leverage in coming to the market and people are at first people need to be reassured that shorting is indeed the way to go and uh so i do think that yes uh, we need to be perhaps a little bit more boring still um uh the ascending wedge that i have been talking for months and months now that have been this is the ascending wedge that i have been seeing which began breaking down on uh at the end of august and it still not hasn't broken down completely in order to break down that it's still in the process of breaking down so we have to we have to undertake we have to take down the previous low 17 point your low curtis mm-hmm. in order for this wedge to be really broken we have to at least week be f- below at least week even week is enough like right doesn't have to even be the close but so um, i think that's still in the process of happening and i really hope that the short leverage will then come and we will keep coming there is lots of bearish talk um lots of 10k calls yeah would you agree uh i haven't noticed that whether the sentiment which way it's going right now um i haven't been watching um but yeah yeah it seems now that that's just normal that it would go to 12k so um if you're a contrarian you would say that that's that's bullish you know but uh now it's very normal for everyone to say yeah it's going to go to 12k or uh 15k it's been three months since the low uh, i think mm-hmm. it was june june 16th mm-hmm. or june 17th and we have it's literally now... not moved we have not yeah. moved at all 
And three months is significant. Not on, only that, I mean, we've had really scary, you know, scary stock market times. So, I mean, mm -hmm. Bitcoin's done quite well if you consider how scary uh, the Fed has been and the, the raising rates and people calling for a, a stock market crash. And yet Bitcoin's held this level for three months. And also September is usually the worst of the months uh, or one of the historically worst months for the crypto. And we right. are in the midst of September. And right now we would break even. So we, I think we indeed, we have to close this month lower than we are. So below 20K. And if the history should be any, um, any significance at this point, then my best guess would be that this month should be even close below the previous low of 17.6k. Right. So that would be my best guess. If uh, you look at it on a monthly chart, that's interesting because people say we're touching the 20k high from 2017, right? But if you mm -hmm. that only was there for like a day or something, you look at the monthly close, what was it? It was more like 14,000 the 2017 oh okay mm -hmm. yeah right mm -hmm. this chart makes it look like mm -hmm. you know a little bit I differently agree. Right? i can yeah. see the line here i agree with yeah. you that and this is uh, also the top of the week from the little buran from 2019 i remember that right. buran i was already in crypto at that point right. i understood nothing but i knew that this was going to, going to be my way so i was very interested and, right uh, I remember that <laughs> it was yeah almost yeah. So the 2017 days. high it was only at 20k for two or three days if i remember mm -hmm. a day or two right and then indeed. it was gone indeed so 14k is some of a significance i agree with you i'm, I'm uh, absolutely mm. um okay let's have a look at the stocks perhaps and right if you, if you would like to add anything yeah so again the 3650 is still the low again from june it was 3650 mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. we had that rally up to about 4300 and now we've come back down obviously the august inflation report was a little bit too high uh, too high inflation reported and the stocks have sold off last week um, we had another day of like a trillion dollars sold off. We had a huge down, down wick. Um, so I, from what I'm hearing, we need to hold about 3,900 or you could have um, some stop losses triggered, which would be okay. the biggest bearish. Um, I mean, in my opinion, I think, I think we are topping with inflation. Um, and I think the market could be is starting to feel that. However, you could have stop losses get triggered at 3,800 or 3,900, and you could have a cascade down just on a technical um, sort of cascading um, stop losses. Um, but I don't think the interest uh, hikes are topping, unfortunately. I don't think. Right. Well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so uh, it's looking precarious. Uh, we're not far off the 3,600 level. Um, you know, we're going to have quarter three earnings in October. We'll get another inflation print in October. Mm -hmm. And if those are also looking bad, um, sure, we could go lower. Yeah, uh, f uh, from July, I've been calling the retest of the lows simply because I did not believe that the all of these fears have been around and uh, the inflation, the high inflation, and the the high the the rates, the rate hikes, I didn't think that all of that was going to resolve like that fast. That we would just leave these levels and not return this year. So, I've been making this. I have made a circle in July, and it looks like it is going to be hit. And uh, but I agree with you that even if we even if we go below my circle, it's likely going to be just a week. I think that lots of stop losses would be actually like below 36 50 like and those stop losses might be hunted and then we might i don't think uh there is that much i think i think this year have already been too fearful for one year and i think <laughs> uh i think the fears they always have their end somewhere so i think there is going to be some real relief uh this year uh we are in the second half of uh, obviously 
but I don't think that just yet. And we are, we are going to just talk about also why. So, yeah, perhaps yeah. Uh, let's progress perhaps to what you have to say to that inflation. Sure. Okay. So um, this is the, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between headline inflation and core inflation. So this is headline inf inflation, which includes all of the uh, products within the basket, including um, gasoline and food. Okay. Whereas the, uh, the core, the core inflation rate takes out gasoline and food. So when we include the whole basket, you can see it does look like we might be topping. Uh, we, we, we're at 8.3. Um, I guess you could argue it might hold eight or it might even go up again. Uh, but um, given that there's a lagging, there's lagging indicators with some of these um, numbers, um, I would say it's better than 50% chance we've peaked with headline inflation. I'm not an expert, just a guess of mine. Um, with the 9.1 being the top, um, but still it could stay persistent. So we could grind along at 8%. That would also be very, very bad. So they need the rate to go down to something like five, uh, for it to start to, uh, make Powell, uh, more relaxed. Um, anyway, so it came down to 8.3. If you look at my next slide, uh, it shows core. So core inflation went up and this was the bad news. Uh, core inflation went up from 5.9 to 6.3. And again, core inflation is the same as headline, except it doesn't include gasoline and food. Okay. That's why there's a difference with one going up and one going down. And this is very bad. And this is why the market sold off. Mm -hmm. um, this is why rates um, are going to go up at the next um, Fed meeting of about probably 0.75. And they do need to bring this down. Now, um, Particularly rents and food are why this has gone up. Those are the two big um, components of the basket, the basket of, of prices. Rent and food went up. Um, the rent in particular is a lagging indicator. And some of the uh, people I'm following are saying that should come down. So um, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, we'll need to get it going down, both going down fairly soon um, to see a rebound in stocks. So it was very bad for the bulls. No, ex no excuses there. Very bad for the bulls. Yeah, so this is just the other um, side of the argument. I'm still hanging on to my thesis that rates can't go that much higher, okay? Um, and so uh, one of, this chart is showing the US government's making payments on the bonds, right? Or payments on interest rates. So as it raises rates, it needs to pay higher interest. And you can see we're almost at $500 billion. If there's a cost to raising rates to the government. They're basically, they're gonna run a higher and higher fiscal deficit as rates rise. The US government is a net payer of the rates. So the money is going out of uh, US coffers into the private sector. So it's painful for the, the, the fiscal deficit. It's also good for asset prices, okay? So there's more money going into the hands of private investors from the government. Those people need to do something with that money, right? It's a transfer payment mm -hmm. from government to the private sector. Guess who buys stocks? The private sector. Guess who buys crypto? The private sector. So there's a, a transfer, um, an increased fiscal deficit, and more cash going into the pockets of private investors. So in the short term, all government spending is good for asset prices in the sense that it, it circulates money in the economy. It goes into private pockets. Um, it also runs a deficit, which in the medium to long term is very dangerous. But uh, this shows that trend. There's also only so much the U.S. government can afford to spend, right? So as this gets higher and higher, they need to say, look, we're running a higher, a, a higher deficit than we want. Nothing to add, I think, well explained. Um, so let's have a look at the last article. Yeah, and then the other side is just that the Japanese yen, um, again, is super weak. And last week, um, uh, Kuroda-san, Kuroda is the head of the Bank of Japan. He's like the Jerome Powell of Japan, uh, okay. Kuroda. And he has started to say that he's not happy with the very, the, the fast weakening of the yen. And he's talking to the prime minister Kishida-san and talking about 
maybe intervening in the markets or maybe talking to uh, the head of the U.S. government and saying, look, uh, this is not good for trade balances. So I talked about this in a previous video that basically U.S. products are going to get too expensive if the U.S. dollar gets too strong versus the euro or JPY. I think that the next bad thing is going to be the energies. Energy prices Energies, affecting what that's though? Affecting everything, right? Again, we're we're talking about U.S. Everything. stocks, right? We're talking about U.S. stock prices. Um, it you're saying that it would affect their earnings, is that right? Uh, yes, yes. Also, well, dra dramatically also affects the households, right? Right, like dramatically, yeah. but also well, the businesses. But rem yeah, Transfer so costs, like remember everything. the economy can be having trouble and stock and asset prices can still go way up, right? They can they become yes um, because they are pricing ahead. They're pricing ahead. Yes. So while in the recession, even we are going to rally, and we are going to go down well before right the, the recession actually hits because it's being priced in ahead in time. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, uh, well, anything else to add or shall I progress to the altcoins? I have prepared something. Go ahead, go ahead. So uh, I was looking to short big Ethereum. Um, I did short 2000, but I did close 17 something hundred. I was looking forward to short. Unfortunately, I, I didn't short this peak here because the funding rates were just too low. I'm going to show you the Binance funding rate. This, uh, this is the Ethereum funding rate. And uh, during the time of the merge, like I have never seen this, <laughs> like we had <laughs> initiative 0.3% funding for Ethereum. Like this is insane. I don't know, like it broke all my expectations. I did think that people will be shorting, but that everybody will short. That's one, that's one way we're not to short, okay? Even if in this case it worked out because Ethereum went, went down, but just to slightly, it didn't go dramatically down. Right. But you never short. I mean, I never short when I see other people shorting. Um, the right. only way, and where I'm, uh, um, I will progressively get, be getting better from shorting because I believe it's very important given to what I believe, uh, what kind of a Bitcoin well, bubble we still are at, even though we are 20K. but. Mm. Well, anyway, um, um, so um, um, Ethereum did go down, but the funding rates are back to, to zero, so or right. even positive right now. So fortunately, it's getting better. And if we have some kind of a, a little bit of the upswing, there is still going to be, a, I think, opportunity to short Ethereum. Um, uh, so we have merged, as you all well know, it happened when people didn't think it would happen because this summer people everybody was saying that it's going to be delayed again so mm -hmm. this is exactly where these things happen and the same for the other major upgrades of other projects uh, they never happened at the first uh, deadlines they are always delayed and they can be years delayed just as right. it is with the merge and then when everybody loses the confidence it actually will happen then it happens so right. Uh, uh, that's another lesson to, to remember as well as the timing goes. So did, is... did it break anything? Was it a smooth? I didn't follow how it went. Did it, it was it smooth? Didn't dramatically break anything. Actually, there is okay. some worrying news that even only few addresses control like 40% of the, uh, staked ETH. But uh, other than these worrying news, there is not that nothing that dramatic that has yet broken if you would have uh, seen bigger slide downwards in the price if it has okay we are still relatively high and also still relatively high versus bitcoin this is ethereum on the bitcoin contract yes right. we are breaking down i can see that we have already closed daily one daily only one close is not that much but right. we are aspiring to close another below this swing point that's going to be major thing because it means that we are then very likely going to retest not only this but also probably this cluster right uh, so what is your prediction you're bullish on ethereum for next year uh there this is a very good question from what i've just 
updated I updated my uh, altcoin in the logarith logarithmic regression chart there ha there are a lot of logarithmic regressions out there today it's very easy today to do them even with automatic uh, update from the feed however this is my traditional sheet I still update it manually and I update it from the numbers from coin market cap the automatic feeds are from the uh, um, trading view numbers and they have slightly different numbers than the coin market cap so i have updated my my log regression sheet this is for the altcoins so it's the total current market cap minus bitcoins market cap and the uh, very interesting results are that we are fairly valued and you would really expect uh -huh. that we are undervalued given how mm -hmm. much down we went mm -hmm. some altcoins went down 80 percent some 90 percent the smaller ones on right. now 99 point something percent so hello strong for instance strong notes and stuff so um and this is very interesting because uh uh it's uh it it um foretells that there is likely going to be some kind of an altcoin well not disaster if not disaster then some kind of a a huge drop still the chart looks really bad look at the chart the top one there if you go to the top one uh -huh. it looks like we're gonna go way below that right well yeah this is the the white line here is the yeah so the, we're uh, gonna go is low the, is the market cap the red line is the uh this is the chart for the screen i believe it should show better the red cut the red line is the uh, uh current fair fair the trend line so the fair value of the altcoins and we are light on it we're 100 percent we are the fairly valued right now and this is the uh this this yellow chart here it's the um uh, overvaluation or undervaluation so if this was 400 percent it means that we were 400 percent above the trend line here in 2021 which you can see this spike here right Right. That was the biggest overvaluation we had, 400 something percent, and we are right now at the line. And yeah, I just you have as you have just pointed out, and even when you look into the history, it is very likely that we are going to go undervalued still. So if we went down to 60% versus trend line, we would still go minus 40% from where we are at the moment. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, if it happens in time, if it happens later, then uh, obviously it's gonna be it's gonna be more because the trend line is going up. So the fair value, like half year from now, is gonna be higher than it is now. Right. So right. even sixty percent, uh, six even forty percent undervalued, it's still not going to be that much lower, but it's still gonna be lower. So bottom line, of what I can yeah. say that altcoins are not going anywhere i don't think so right generally not anytime soon the sample size is a bit small it's a smaller comparing to bitcoin because the first years of crypto it was just bitcoin but it's not that small because it's still a year eight years already so mm. uh, it's going to be 10 years the next year so it's not that small to be you know completely fairly honest 10 years it's something but yeah when you compare it to the stocks you can't that's why also what i keep saying to all the cycles guys like this is not really cycles what they think they are because they see booms and busts no 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 like yeah. one cycle in time in time it's gonna be obvious i think that uh cycles they always take longer to form and i think that we had one we had one cycle from inception of bitcoin to 2020 and i think we are now in second cycle and it also makes sense when you think of how the startups works usually on the start stock market that the startup has like first cycle of startup is when the startup is like experiment nobody knows about it and then the second cycle begins when like general public learns and when it becomes accessible general public like so that's why also where i'm contrarian to the majority of the people that think that the, uh, the cycles are the booms and busts bottom line i think that the bitcoin dominance is gonna go up and also my uh, bitcoin dominance chart also confirms i have been long term saying that we are going to go up on the bitcoin dominance so altcoins versus bitcoin are likely to go 
down over the next six to 12 months. So 2023, do you see a higher Bitcoin price? Okay, About 2023, 20? 2023. Uh, right. So first of all, we are going to have to see what the energy crisis about the energy crisis. I think at the start of the year, the households will go dramatically higher energies. So people, it's going to be pretty um, stressful. Again, lots of fears, I think. So higher Bitcoin. I think that we will see higher Bitcoin prices even even this year because I have many reasons to believe that that this year, yes, <laughs> the next year I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. by December you're saying we're going to get above what 30k? No, 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 I'm not saying that, but I am saying higher that we higher. will we will be higher by December than we are. Well, way above 20k, surely, way above 20k in my opinion. But first of all, we need to break down still the wedge. So I think right, we are yeah. in the middle. But okay. uh, there is there have been so much, so many fears that I do, I can fairly imagine. And given that everybody is bearish and the influencers I was waiting for to get bearish, they have gotten bearish. We are in a panic phase. We are due to uh, capitulation phase. I can reasonably uh yeah i can reasonably imagine that we will have some kind of relief like yeah big relief that we've seen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. altcoins are gonna go uh are be very will be way worse over the next 12 months than bitcoin i think generally and mm -hmm. i'm not sure why uh it might come to what you have said that the sec might attack some and if the sec is going to attack some yeah i i i agree I don't think by any mean that they will attack all altcoins. Absolutely no. I don't. I completely disagree. Mm -hmm. But they might attack some projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess which one, it's going to be BNB, for sure. They can't attack all of them because it's quite a bit of manpower to to execute a lawsuit. <laughs> but they may scare. They may attack one, and they then may it attack may one. Scare, it may hurt the value of all the others, right? Like let's say BNB mm -hmm. gets closed or shut down or de delisted um, from the us exchanges if that right, happens could, yeah, yeah i was thinking that bnb might be the next big short because if that happens then you see this gap this is the bnb chart you see this mm -hmm. gap mm -hmm. like this is unspeakable gap this gap yeah. happened because binance smart chain got released 2021 and the price appreciated very crazily right and there is unbelievably big big space untested right and this is if if the bnb gets delisted then it's it's hard to imagine right now but from yeah. where we are it's 80 percent down yeah sure that's all i have for today on my side uh that's all from my side as well so we are going to wrap this up uh, the next time when we stream. I think that we will still decide if we will stream in one week or two weeks. But there is Isabel coming back. She's going to bring something interesting for you. Uh, there is also one other guy, uh, John. Uh, it's a little bit of a surprise. Um, it's an entrepreneur, I believe. Um, he's going to introduce himself and the projects he's working on as well. He's contacted me recently, so um, he might uh, it might appear in October. So uh, I think there are reasons to keep this uh, this uh, podcast going. And besides, we are sharing lots of valuable info between one another, Curtis. So looking forward to the next one. And your video is live now, so it's much more attractive. Uh, yeah, my uh, the uh, the the reviews uh, have organic traction. Yes, uh, there is always people coming to see the reviews. Yeah. So, yeah, some of them might watch this. Okay, great. So thank you very much and see you again the next time. Thanks, David.